we are Jonty and Millie, and along with our kids, we look for the amazing wonders of our world, living in Singapore and exploring beyond. Welcome to Wonderlust. We are on the remorque for the very first time. Yeah. This is Samuth, our guide. We are heading off right now towards uh, Angkor Wat and all the different temples. We've got um, some tickets to buy. So, oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> the bumpy, dusty road soon leveled out onto one of Siem Reap's brand new roads. Over a hundred kilometers of smooth tarmac have been laid over the forced downtime of COVID in preparation for the many tourists who will be returning to Cambodia in the near future. Despite the empty car park, the ticket office was open. A one day adult ticket to multiple temples was $37 and the children go free. So we got our tickets, we went straight in and out and Smooth, our guide, was telling us that before you'd have to queue maybe 15 or 20 minutes to get a ticket and the queue would be going up and down the whole building. So I really hope that tourism picks up here because it sounds like it's hit people's lives pretty tough. We're gonna head back onto our vehicle, which is so fun. I didn't get to dry my hair this morning, so it's drying in the breeze. And then we're gonna make way to the temple. stopped up for a checkpoint for our tickets, which is a little bit strange because it's just on the side of the road and loads of other vehicles are going past um, and uh, they're not all going to the temple, they're going to different places but uh, that was the place for us to check our tickets which is kind of random but it's quite cool. Uh, it's been such a cool journey so far, very very smooth. Yeah, loving it. And just looking around different scenery, different trees, it's yeah, it's quite a lot to take in. It's really nice to be somewhere different and be able to experience something like this. All of these buildings around us have only just been built in the last year, two years, during COVID, uh, to get ready for when all of the tourists come back. The roads, these buildings here. So if you were here pre-COVID, it would have looked very, very different. In a global effort to look after the Angkor Wat site, many different nations have donated trees for a new forest. So we've had our tickets checked again and we're walking across this floating bridge. The original one is just over here and it's being restored. So we're walking across here. Um, there is a dress code here. So I've got my shoulders covered and I bought a long dress with pockets, the best, um, because if you're over 12, um, females, girls, they have to have their knees and their shoulders covered. So we're making our way across and getting closer and closer to the temple. I'm really excited to be here. Different entrances here are for different people. So the one over here is actually for elephants and animals to get through. Um, and the one on the far end is for the king. Um, so. So Muth is taking us somewhere maybe to one in the middle, in between royalty and herd. <laughs> Among the stunning stone carvings of the outer buildings are remnants and reminders of the Cambodian Civil War of the 1970s, where around 300,000 people lost their lives. This place is just incredible um, and the whole temple was only built in 37 years, that's all it took. Uh, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, all of the rocks and the stone here were brought on the river from about six kilometres away and they were brought into the site by elephants. stand in a spot just like this and he would tell all of the guards and the army what they needed to do while they were out here and standing here is just so vast. Samuth is unbelievably knowledgeable about this stuff it's so good I just find it incredible so much so that I'd forgotten to look outside of the temple for a moment and that is just stunning as well. Um, I'm absolutely loving being here and experiencing this um, and this is just our first morning here 
in Cambodia. Um, what an amazing country. So the beginning half of this huge, now I'm looking back at it, it's so long. Um, you've got the Khmer people down this end and then this side is all um, Thai people that were brought in to help with the war. And you can tell that the, the stars are dressed are different, the headdresses are different, they've got spears, um, facial features are different as well. So it's really interesting that the whole story is told along this really, really long, long, long war. So we've been wandering around, I uh, didn't even have like a look of what the time is, this place you could just spend hours and hours in here and then somebody just said we're now going to go to the temple and I realised this is just the outside of the temple and I'm going to go through to the actual temple. You look a bit out of breath, what's going on? There's 47 steps up and it's still really, really steep. Even though they've built like wooden steps on top of it, yeah, they're <sighs> steep. At the centre of the temple, at the top of those really steep stairs, is the most sacred part of the site. Over the centuries, Angkor Wat has changed from a Buddhist temple to a Hindu temple and today is used by both. The way that all of the ornate um, carvings of the temple have been so well preserved just allows you to be able to kind of throw your mind back as if you were living a thousand years ago. I'm just absolutely amazed by the fact that there's nobody else here right now um, and feel very fortunate to be coming um, when it's so quiet. Um, I've seen videos of this place just packed with people um, and people trying to you know catch some shade. <laughs> Uh, and to, to, to cool down a little bit, but there's a breeze coming through here. It's absolutely silent. Uh, we probably just heard the pigeon just a moment ago. Um, so yeah, we are gonna take our way down again to save some mooth from the kids who are probably uh, starting to get a little bit fidgety now. <laughs> So we're bang smack in the middle of the temple and I'm just going to get the compass up on my phone and what you'll see if I place my phone on the floor right in the middle so you can see how we've aligned it to the floor on the line and it perfectly points north and south and we're headed towards west at the moment out through that door. We ate lunch in one of the new buildings and tried a local fish paste called brohok, which was seasoned with red ants to give it a sour taste. We loved it so much we bought a jar for ourselves. Well, we just ate a, a wonderful meal for um, approximately 22 US dollars. Um, so as promised I got the kids some ice cream and um, Samuth has just gone to get the remorque and then we're going to get into the remorque and head off to our next destination for today. Hi, Samus. Hello, thank you. We have just had a nice short uh, but fun and comfortable uh, remorque ride over to the next temple and this one is the one that's famous for the Lara Croft uh, scene here. So we're gonna go check it out. The kids have got no idea who Lara Croft is, what the movies are, but that's what we've sold it on, so that's what we're gonna enjoy. So you can see around us there's a lot of rebuilding of uh, some ruins essentially. Um, some of them had fallen apart 400 years ago and they're looking at how they can piece it together like a puzzle to be able to rebuild some of these temple pieces which is incredible. So it does mean though at the moment as we walk up there is all this green netting around us um, but we are coming up towards the temple now. Uh, 
And so the guys playing in the band, they were injured by landmines and um, they had a little sign up that just says that they decided to form the band so that they could get income, they want to send their children to school and um, to raise money for their family as well. And walking around, that's one of the things that I guess is quite sad from COVID. You kind of see the ripple effect that um, COVID has had with people losing their jobs, especially somewhere like this, where those guys would have really relied on tourism. On our way to the temple in true Milo and Aspen form, our kids made friends with some of the local children, despite the language barrier. This tree is actually growing on top of the temple and the roots are flowing through the temple. You can see over here some pictures of just a pile of rubble basically and underneath is what is behind you. Uh, let me turn you around. Completely rebuilt stone for stone. are kind of like liquid how they've poured down and then just rolled over but it's just crazy to think how many hundreds of years this has been growing for it's just beautiful i don't really know what to say about so much of it um other than it being beautiful and amazing and um, i probably need to fill up my vocabulary with more superlatives but um yeah uh, I think we'll probably just stay quiet and let you experience as much of this as you can through the screen. Uh, I can't stress enough how amazing it would be for you to come and check this out yourself, but hopefully you can enjoy it through the screen for now. We are leaving this temple now and heading to another one, but wow, this one feels so different to Angkor Wat. It is real ruins. Um, it really felt like we were stepping into a mystery, whereas Angkor Wat felt like we're stepping back into time. I wonder what the next one's going to feel like. We are now at Bayon Temple, and this is one that was built in the late 12th century. Uh, where I am at the moment used to have a roof, um, but it collapsed in. There are some beautiful towers around here that have a face on every uh, one of the four sides. And um, I don't know how many there are, I think there are 54 altogether. And so we've asked the kids whether they can count how many faces there are in total. Uh, so the answer would be 216. But I said it quietly because they're around. Is it Not even close. What? All of this rubble behind me that's been stacked up is all part of the roof that has fallen down. Um, I guess, like the other temples we've been to today, they are going to rebuild it when the time is right. But it's such a big job in their hands, but it's quite incredible to see what they're doing with it all. We tried a puzzle recently, like a thousand, no it wasn't even a thousand, it was a 500 piece puzzle. That was difficult, there's still a little hole in the middle of it. <laughs> It's just amazing. And we've been watching videos on YouTube about it as well. And I'm sure maybe as you're watching this one, you just, you can't grasp like the beautifulness, if that's a word. Beauty. 
beauty of this place or the vastness of it as well like we've just walked through loads of little dark corridors that just all split off into different places like narrow corridors to walk around some of it's fallen down so you can't get through all of it but it's just huge and it's beautiful the carvings are just incredible I was saying like, I would love to come back in like 10 years time maybe and see what's been repaired what's been replaced because they're like John just said there's massive stacks of it that have just fallen down and they're gonna try and piece it all together as a puzzle which is incredible 10 years time I'll be 38 so Watch out. The temples close at half past five, so we're making our way now. Um, it is uh, about 22 minutes past, um, but the sun is beginning to set and it is a clear evening. So we're going to try and gain a little bit of elevation um, and see if we can catch the sunset in the next few minutes. A three minute ride on the remork brought us to the foot of a hill, upon which sat our final temple of the day. So Smith dropped us off and he said he was going to go and park and then come back and find us but we realised we've been sent off of a path, we don't know how long it takes to get to the top, um, we're just following everyone else who I presume is also going to find a sunset too. You can make some money out of this one. Huh? That's right Karen. A very short walk has brought us here to this beautiful viewpoint and the perfect spot for the sunset. Uh, there is water in the background, we've got rainforests and just an open sky. We're looking forward to the next 20 minutes to half an hour or so. After a short pause looking at that uh, sunset, we are heading on a little bit further up as there's a temple on the top and I think an even better view of the sunset. Just got a little glimpse of the temple over this wall here. So we're very close and it looks beautiful. Look at this. We've made it to the top. Not that far, but a lot of steps right at the end there. Kids have made it up full of energy as well, which is good because we're still gonna go back down. Uh, but from here, there's just a beautiful view of Angkor Wat down there and behind you and the way I'm facing is where the sunset will be in just a few moments. As the sun went down, the streets lit up with more and more food stalls set up on the back of remorks and under makeshift stands. We made our way to 60 Street, home to a local market for our dinner. We came through this street earlier and it was absolutely empty, like, I mean desolate. And all of a sudden, these marketplaces have popped up and it is rammed. The place is alive. So we're looking forward to getting some more food. Samuth so scoured each stall for a good place for dinner and took time to explain how some of the dishes were made before we sat down to tuck into our meal. First up, bugs. Hello guys, we're going to try some snails. Some snails. Put the inside. Yeah. Here you are. Oh. Oh, what do you think? Pretty good. There's a lot, it's like pick and mix, but totally not the pick and mix it. Pick and mix, but the stuff. I know it's kind of weird, but I'm putting my finger in it and kind of expecting it to um, to move still. This is softer, I expect it to be crunchy. But here we go, silkworm. It tastes familiar. Oh, actually it tastes a bit nutty. Okay. It popped. Silkworm done. Something with legs. Something with legs, okay. Ooh, that sounded crunchy. Mm. 
That one tastes um, a bit like dried shrimp. Oh. It's really nice. It's quite nice. It's quite sweet. It's a meaty leg. It's quite tasty. <laughs> so I like the flavour. I don't really like the texture. Try the beetle. I feel like I've got a, a leg in my throat. Oh my goodness. What is oh, look at its face. Is it good? Okay, that's good. Wasn't there some frog in there? There is some frog in here. Okay, Kung Fu frog. <laughs> Kung Fu frogs. So I've never eaten them like this before. Um, we usually have them in like frog porridge or whatever in Singapore, so I'm just gonna go for it straight in. Mmm! Okay. That's a really familiar flavour. You know? You know, and the um on the end of the chicken wing, the bony one, yeah. and you've over roasted it a little bit. It tastes a bit like that. That's quite nice. Cricket. Cricket? Uh, the crickets are here. I think you'll like it. Crunchy. Wow. Check you out. You're amazing. She's amazing. Oh, they're nice. I hope you got a leg hanging out. <laughs> That's a grasshopper. That one's grasshopper. Try this then. Yeah, try it. Nice too. <laughs> Don't look at him. If you're gonna look at him, you gotta say sorry. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you taste like chicken. Yeah. We haven't tried these ones. Cheers. 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 Oh. Oh. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not having it. That one is just chill. We eat something a lot like this in Singapore, um, otta, and it's pounded fish and it's quite spicy. This, I've opened it up and it's white inside. You can order chili, you can take chili out. Okay, I'll leave it in, see what happens. Yeah. So I'm putting it inside the lettuce, getting some rice noodles, and I'm gonna wrap it up. What? And then I'm gonna dip it in this sauce. Nice. Really nice, nice fresh flavors. I can. Half of my tongue is going numb in the chili. As standard, if I'm having curry, I've always ended up with a white t-shirt on for some oh, reason, no. so uh, you'll see it on me in a little while. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just try some of this. That's nice. It's not dissimilar to the Malaysian laksa I had oh, okay. in Borneo the other day. Hardly any spice, it's bright red, but I don't feel any spice in it. This dark thing is <coughs> Very similar to black pudding, made out of blood. I'm not a massive fan of black pudding, but um, I'm gonna try it anyway. Let's see how we go here. I'm gonna get a big one, so. Mm. Oh, really different to black pudding. I'd happily have another one of them. Black pudding's quite muddy. Yeah, it's not muddy at all, it's quite soft. We have had an amazing evening, actually, trying all these foods. I. I've been so impressed with the kids and um, just the attitude they had to trying stuff that was new. And they found out that they absolutely love crickets. Uh, they really enjoyed the frogs. They polished off the frogs. Millie didn't even get a chance to have one. Um, and we had such a wonderful time. What a beautiful end to the day. And a long day in all of the uh, different temples. But we're gonna make our way back now to, um, to the villa, have a good rest, ready for tomorrow morning.